I have for some time now become very weary of the debate and I feel it's time to call it a day. However, this channel will continue and will be maintained by others. To my Muslim friends I say Lakum Dinakum Waliyadin or rather Waliyaladin. I will, however, try to briefly answer the question I get asked most often. Why did you leave Islam? It wasn't one particular issue or argument that led me to lose my faith, though there were many that had a powerful effect. Nor was it that I discovered anything new about Islam that I didn't already know. It was basically because of a change in perspective. I started to take a much more critical look at Islam. I'm not entirely sure how or what caused this change, but once it happened, the whole story Islam presented, and which I had for so long taken for granted, began to look increasingly absurd, and my faith slowly began to fall apart. The whole idea that God's ultimate aim for mankind is that they pick the correct, unfounded, dubious, and unsupported ancient claim, so he can eternally reward or roast them who could easily provide undeniable and irrefutable evidence of his existence and of what religion is true, but instead keeps himself hidden and ensures there is plenty of reasonable doubt, then makes the punishment for disbelief so obscenely excessive and cruel. A God who does not need worship, yet demands worship, who does not need to create, but does so for the benefit of his creation, even though most of these wretched creatures will not benefit from being created. Who wants us to freely choose to love and worship him, yet threatens us if we don't. A parochial God who ignores most of the world in favour of a small area of desert. Who did his best stuff 2,000 years ago, then took early retirement 1,400 years ago. Who sent three crucial books, but allowed the first two, to be terribly corrupted before deciding he'll protect the third one, which of course he could have done from the start, avoiding massive schisms and lots of people having to be boiled, roasted, barbecued and various other delightful recipes from his cookbook. Who will make his messages so ambiguous, misunderstood and easily misinterpreted that people will forever be arguing and killing each other over it. Who will make the descriptions in his book like Adam and Eve look as if they contradict the scientific evidence. Whose test basically involves killing, starving, maiming and afflicting these poor creatures with disease, disaster and congenital defects, then punishes them if they lose faith in him. Who will allow the fundamental criteria for success or failure in this test to largely rest upon where or to whom you are born. But without doubt the crushing blow to my faith was hell. I simply couldn't believe that if there is a God, he would be so sadistically and pointlessly cruel to torture his flawed and limited creatures without end. Boiling fluid will be poured down onto their heads, which will melt what is in their bellies and skins. For them will be hooked rods of iron. Whenever in their anguish they try to escape from hell, they shall be dragged back. A fire which encompasses them like the walls and roof of a tent will hem them in. They will cry out for help, but will be granted scorching water like melted brass that will scold their faces. Dragged through scalding fetid fluid and burnt in the fire. As often as their skins are roasted through, we shall exchange them for new skins. No food except pus. The tree of Zakum will be the food of the sinners. Like molten brass, it will boil their insides. Like the boiling of scalding water. It will be said, seize him and drag him into the midst of the blazing fire. Then pour over his head the torment of the boiling water. They will be given boiling water to drink that tears their bowels to pieces. Never will it be eased off them, nor will they be reprieved. Never will they get out. Hell for all eternity.
to call a God who does this merciful is ridiculous beyond words. Once I looked at these verses with open eyes, my faith simply collapsed. And not because I totally reject the idea that there might be a God, but because if there is a God, I believed he must be better than this. For argument's sake, let's assume I have failed to comprehend God's wisdom. Then God can, of course, eternally roast my skin off, boil my brains and melt my face over and over again for mistakenly thinking he would be better than this. But let us also, for argument's sake, assume that it is you who are wrong. And if there is a God, he has nothing to do with the descriptions in the Quran or the Bible for that matter. Then who is really insulting him? Is it I who believes God could not be a sadistic monster? Or is it you who believes he is?